while the end of the world disabled any form of media. From the TV news to radio broadcast, one show has been online during the entire of the pandemic and after. The pirate radio broadcast, Wouldn't You Know It, by Rick Fallacy. In his show, he addresses many things that are considered unknown to the public, leading to many questions. Who is Rick Fallacy? How does he get his information? Where is he hiding? These and other questions I will try to answer in this video. We'll cover three aspects. The early parts of the crisis with the missing person echoes from Judy Walters. His radio show, Wouldn't You Know It? And the phone recordings where Ruth Massey is on Falassi's trail. As per usual, we're starting off at the start, chronologically, which is the beginning of the pandemic. Rick Falassi is a freelance reporter, conspiracy theorist and radio show broadcaster. We're following the missing person, Judy Walters, and Judy Walters is a would-be whistleblower for the pharmaceutical company Fexix. Rick Falassi contacted Judy for information on the company, withholding information on their progress towards a cure for the green poison. I'm sorry, but you'll have to take your things and vacate the area. This is private property and you're obstructing traffic. Hey, no They're traffic not monsters, here, Mr. Come Falassi. On. I'm going to try and persuade them again. Judy, this is a story whether you persuade them or not. Listen, listen, listen. You don't have to go on the air with this, but if you can at least get me some kind of proof. I need to go. I'll call you back. Inside, Judy, who is a lab assistant for the company, downloads non-disclosed research data from Fefix and puts it on a USB stick. Exactly what Falassi is looking for. God, it's getting crazy out there. You know, I thought of taking the day off and calling in sick. My throat's a bit sore. With well, the compensation reviews coming up. Hey, Judy. Judy? Hang on. Mr. Velassi, I meant it. I'm not talking until I give them another chance to do the right thing. And I hope you convince them. But if you don't, I'll be waiting outside to get you out. I'm live on the air at 7. But before Judy is ready to expose Fefix, she wants to give them a chance to do the right thing and come out with the data themselves. Going. You know, some more manpower and resources, we'd have that cure. Guess I thought that maybe, just maybe, we'd put humanity first. Obviously, it was a corporation and they weren't interested. She left the building with the files to meet Falassi at the rendezvous point in front of the building. But before she could leave the building, she had to get through security. Miss Walters, I need you to wait. Go with me. After escaping the JTF officers, she ran up the street. Falesi was just walking up to the building when this happened. Be real. No, I'm not kidding. Shh. It literally just happened right in front of me. The story isn't over yet. Damn, that didn't end well. Judy got hit by a cap and she died on the spot. Rick Falassi, only caring about his story, was shocked, but before leaving the area he grabbed the USB stick out of her pocket to tell the story another day. This is one story Falassi covered at the start of the pandemic. In the meantime, the JTF were building the area to contain the infected individuals, the Dark Zone. Of course, Falassi had to investigate. I'm sorry, which paper are you from? I'm from the radio man. There's been rumors that the government is sealing off this area to hide something. Uh, some people say it's the blast zone of an experimental I... bioweapon. <sighs> Look, someone get this guy out of here.
Later broadcasts can be heard on the radios from the base corporations and safe houses. It's Rick Valesi with his broadcast show, Wouldn't You Know It? In this show, he covers many issues around the current situation in Manhattan. Topics he reported on are the Green Poison, certain factions, the Dark Zone, Directive 51 and the Division itself. Welcome back, I'm Rick Falassi and you, you lucky bastards are listening to Wouldn't You Know It? And if you're listening, that means you really are a lucky bastard. You apparently won the genetic lottery and can't catch the Green Poison like 95% of the rest of humanity. Oh no, you had it good. You got to sit around eating bonbons, watching people you loved wither and die and get wrapped in hefty bags and dumped in a mass grave with no funeral or gravestone or nothing. Yeah, we got a golden ticket, didn't we? It's like the fucking 80s all over again. But what I want to know is this. The green poison. Where'd it come from? Some... Yuppie scum millennial helicopter mom refusing to give her kids a goddamn measles shot? I wish. I hate those morons. But this ain't measles. And that ain't the way the world works. And it ain't Ebola or Marburg. It didn't evolve in bat shit some monkey ate before some idiot ate the monkey. No. I tell you where it came from. It came from a lab. This is some design is shit people somebody cooked this up on purpose and and maybe it got out by accident or maybe they let it out on purpose but either way if you don't think the federal government is involved in some fucked up way or other than a you don't have my sources and b you've been comatose for the last 60 years because god knows there ain't no advantage for people who love power in a situation like this right <laughs> nah never happened Wake up, New York. Open your eyes. Think. This is the first of 12 broadcasts he did where he addressed the green poison. I will showcase the rest at the end of the video for the people that are interested in them since they combine take up a lot of time so I won't show them right now. We'll move on with our story first. Later in the pandemic when snooping around on the west side pier Phone intel was found. It seemed a concerned citizen wasn't buying Falassi's act and decided to look into it herself. Some conspiracy theorist on conspiracy theorist action. Hello, hello, can you hear me? H hello. Oh. <clears throat> yes. My name is Ruth Massey. I've lived in New York for 32 years and I have a question for you. Who is Rick Falassi? I mean, we all know who we think he is. He's the loudmouth who keeps talking on the radio about what he thinks is going on. But is he really that? Or is what he's saying intended as a distraction to keep us away from the real truth? I think that's what's really going on here. That Velassi is a mouthpiece for something or someone, and it's his job to spout opinions that hide the truth. And I'm going to prove it. I'm gonna take down Rick Velassi. Just you watch me. Messi thinks Velassi is supposed to serve as a distraction for someone who's covering things up. Who this person is, she doesn't specify. Is it the government she's referring to, or could there be another person of interest? Did you ever wonder why Velassi's on the air and nobody else seems to be? Why does he have the technology to keep pounding out his drivel when no one else on the entire island of Manhattan, the greatest city on planet Earth, seems to be able to get a basic ham radio set going? And let's face it, he doesn't seem like the handiest guy to have around. I don't think he's the sort to build his own equipment, <laughs> do you? I think someone set him up to be the voice of Manhattan during the crisis. Tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead. I dare you. After some general conspiring and speculating, Messi had been digging into Falassi. So, I went digging into Rick Falassi. There's no waiting for documents anymore. It's all help yourself if you can find it. And if the docs you want didn't get turned into kindling to keep someone from freezing to death. But here's the interesting thing. I couldn't find a thing on Velassi. 
no driver's license, no draft records, no nothing. Now, maybe I was just looking in the wrong place. Or maybe the records were destroyed by accident. But maybe there is no Rick Velassi. He's a ghost. It's something to think about. It seemed Velassi is untraceable. Whatever the reason, the investigation continued. Was it because he doesn't exist, or was it something else? I'm still trying to dig into Velassi's past, and I am getting nowhere. There's no record of where he lives, and no employment history. It's like the government just made him up out of whole cloth when they needed a voice to go out on the airwaves. For all we know, he's not even in Manhattan. He could be in a condo up in Boston eating cheese munchies in between broadcasts and they just pipe him in down here. It's getting too big. I am losing sight of the edges of the web. Messi started getting anxious. Although she had searched for days, even weeks maybe, she couldn't find a thing on Thalassi. Until one specific moment. I've seen him. I've seen someone I'm pretty sure is Thalassi on the street in Morningside Heights. That must mean he lives somewhere close. I'm surprised he even comes out of his lair at all. He must think he's special somehow. Or that he has protection. Yes, I'll bet that's it. If that is Velassi, it could be a government plant to distract me. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We deserve the truth about Rick Velassi and whoever he's fronting for. I will follow him. I will keep an eye on him, I will find him, and then I will find out the secrets he's hiding. I promise you, we will know the truth. Messi thought she found Felassi, yet I don't remember her telling us how she knows what he looks like. She continued with more conspiring, but she started to seem crazier and crazier with each day passing by. They were listening, but now I know they're listening, and I don't know how much time I have left. I'm giving up on the Velassi story. It's too dangerous. It's too big. Bigger than you think. What he's tied up in, Manhattan is only the tip of the iceberg. If I keep looking into it, they're going to kill me. Maybe they're already going to kill me. I don't know. Maybe this is too late. I am telling you, whatever you do, stay away from Rick Velassi. Stay away from... I think that last recording speaks for itself. At no point during her search did she show any sign of evidence. We do know that he exists as a person because we obviously saw him in previously shown echoes. Still, she sounded really frightened at the end and with the cutoff at the end she might have actually been followed. But if it was them with the capital T-H-E-M, I don't know. While his origin and backstory remain unclear, it is clear that Rick Valesi knows a lot about the situation in Manhattan. For those interested, I will now show you the rest of the broadcast from Wooden You Know It. Take it away, Rick. You're back with Uncle Rick and Wouldn't You Know It podcast and pirate radio. Now, everybody knows about the JTF, right? The Joint Task Force. That's like the cops and the firefighters, EMTs, National Guard, reservists, doing what they can to keep some semblance of civic order, keeping things from totally falling to shit. Nothing but respect for those folks. I like the puppets say, those are the people in your neighborhood, they're us. But, they ain't the only ones out there. You ever hear of a little thing called National Security Presidential Directive 51? No? You wouldn't have. Not the sort of thing they put on the front page of the post. No, Directive 51 is more your basic secret government takeover plan type deal. To provide what the spooks refer to as continuity of government. Doesn't sound so scary, does it? until you find out how it works. Which is they got clandestine government agents embedded among us. And when Directive 51 goes out, those agents get activated. Our government has sleeper cells in our own goddamn country. NSA types who look and sound like you and me until their on switch gets flipped. And then what? They start rounding people up? 
Put them in camps executing us? I don't know, but the thing is, nobody knows. I mean, martial law is undemocratic, but at least it's transparent. Who these people are, what they're up to, it's all so top secret, even the president probably doesn't know the details. Plausible deniability, folks. Plausible fucking deniability. Home of the free? My ass. Rick Velassi, constant listener, coming at you once again with Wouldn't You Know It. Hope folks are holding up okay in your neighborhood or containment zone or whatever the hell they're calling it this week. Only chance we got is if we all come together on this, help each other out. We're New Yorkers, that's what we do. Remember that. Because we're going to be tested. I'm bad enough some idiot thinks a time like this is nothing but a golden opportunity to steal shit. And I don't mean food or medicine, I'm talking about stuff they don't even use. I mean, who the fuck needs a goddamn flat screen right now? But it's about to get worse. Apparently, the screws of the jail on Rikers Island are either dead or they gave up and went home. Because word on the street is the doors are open, the inmates are loose, and they're pouring across the river into the city even as we speak. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying everybody in there is an axe murderer. Most of them are waiting on trial for possession. Hell, even I spent a night or two in there in my youth. But look, the harmless ones are gonna head for home. It's the hard time, hardcore we gotta worry about. Those cats are gonna take some serious advantage of things. So stay safe out there, New York. Keep your doors locked. And if you see any of those Rikers people, steer clear of them. You hear me? Be smart. Be smart. New York, New York, you are listening to Rick Falassi and Wouldn't You Know It, the Tri-State Area's favorite pirate radio podcast. Probably its only pirate radio podcast. Now, we've talked about the JTF, the Joint Task Force that's made up of city cops and first responders. They've made a pretty big difference in a lot of neighborhoods since this whole crazy mess got started. But just like food, water, sanity, and clean underwear, the JTF are a handy resource we just don't got enough of. And you know what they say, nature abhors a vacuum. And my sources tell me somebody's trying to step into that breach, somebody military. I'm talking PMC people, private military company types, who get sent into Manhattan to protect the rich folk stuff and found themselves trapped here with the rest of us. So, did they pitch in and play nice? Hell no. These last man battalion Ubatses and their CO, some knucklehead named Bliss, decided Manhattan died and made them king. And since they got guns and the tanks and their shiny uniforms, they're taking their nickel and dime fascist bullshit to the streets. Our streets. And if you're in their territory and don't play by their rules, you're screwed. And by the by, you listen to those loudspeaker trucks that loudmouth bliss keeps running up and down the streets? It's pretty clear he's thinking bigger than just Manhattan. So, if you see anybody in fatigues and Ninja Turtle gear, you let me know. We got a fire in the line, New York. You stay safe. Hey, New York, it's your Uncle Ricky. We need to talk, because I'm afraid I'm starting to lose it. This shit I'm hearing, well, let's just say it sounds more like something out of an airport paperback than real life, and no, I cannot believe I just referred to our present state of post-biological terrorism apocalypse as real life. Okay. So, I have not yet been able to confirm this firsthand. But I have reports of groups of people in containment suits roaming the city with flamethrowers, burning any and all evidence of virus contamination. Properties, bodies. Green poison's been there, they're lighting it up. Yeah, I hear all sorts of theories on who's responsible. Some say city workers like, I don't know, sanitation or something. I also heard government scientists like the DCD cleaning up its mess. These nut jobs are apparently covered head to toe in hazmat gear with homemade flamethrowers. Now, maybe it's fucking aliens at this point. I believe anything. <laughs> I know how it sounds. 
Like I've been saying, paranoia is the only sane response to the last few weeks. I'm trying to chase down something concrete, and when I do, you'll be the first to know about it. Just keep your eyes open, NYC. And remember, just because you're paranoid, don't mean they ain't out to get you. Good morning, New York. Or evening. I can't tell, and to be honest, I don't care. Could be 4 a.m. for all I know. What I do have is a little more info on that Directive 51 stuff. So, remember I was talking about the sleeper agents embedded across America, all thanks to the ultra-classified Directive 51 signed by the President? Turns out some of them have already been activated and were secretly supervising the initial treatment operations. You remember that lovely cattle pen they sent sick people to? And nobody ever came out? Well, when the shit hit the fan in there, all the agencies bugged out. JTF, National Guard, everybody. And the sleeper agents? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Now these people were what the directive refers to as the first wave. Why'd they call them the first wave? Because they got a second wave embedded right behind them. That's right, New York. You thought the fun was over, but no. You get a whole new bunch of faceless government overlords to deal with. And the best part is you don't even know who they are. They could be your neighbor, your coworker, your cousin, your brother-in-law, your fucking grandmother for all I know. Hell, you could be one yourself and not even know it. That's how deep they're buried. Sleep with one eye open, New York. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. New York City from East to Hudson and Bronx to Queens and all the garbage scows at sea. Except Staten Island. You're not a real borough. Rick Falassi here again with Wouldn't You Know It. I keep trying to convince myself this is all just paranoid delusions. <laughs> I'm not succeeding, New York. I am not succeeding. Some of you out there have been asking me to find out the name of this sleeper agency activated by Directive 51. From what I've been able to find out, it's so secret they just call it the Division. Which, I have to say, seems appropriate. I mean, I don't know what good is supposed to do. It certainly didn't save us when the green poison hit. The only thing it's good at is making us wonder who among us is secretly a sleeper agent. Turning us all against each other, dividing us. That's the beauty of this super-classified bullshit. We all start suspecting each other while the East Village burns. Yeah, the Division seems pretty damn good at that, America. Fuck yeah. Calling all cars, calling all cars. You're listening to Wouldn't You Know It, the pirate radio podcast for paranoid insomniacs. I'll tell you what, New York, let's get dark. Now, I know what you're saying. Get dark? Jesus, Ricky, you're usually such a glass half full kind of guy. I know it's hard to believe, but some of you know what I'm talking about. The dark zone. The dark zone. It reminds me of those 19th century maps of the British Empire. The ones where the interior of the second biggest continent on the planet just said, here be dragons. Nobody knows exactly what's there. Nobody sane would go in to find out. Here's what we do know about the Dark Zone. We know they locked up a bunch of sick people in there. We know the folks trying to keep the peace, trying to treat the sick, trying to maintain at least some vestige of order, were forced to run for their lives because order could not be maintained. The center would not hold. We know they left those who couldn't leave, Left them to fend for themselves. Who remained? Who swarmed in to take advantage? Who, if anyone, controls this unmapped terra incognita? The deepest, darkest island within our city. All of this is shrouded from our vision. For now we see through a glass darkly. Now we know nothing. And what keeps me awake at night is worth the glass is a mirror.
<laughs> if anyone listening out there has any information or first-hand knowledge of what the fuck is going on in the Dark Zone, you let me know. As for the rest of you, welcome to the jungle. New York. This is Rick. Sorry, I'm not feeling real glib at the moment. So I went uptown. Decided to have a look for myself at this dark zone. What I have to report ain't hearsay. I saw it with my own eyes. First off, the wall is still there. It's gotten bigger. There's now concertina wire up on top. In December, they were saying it was to keep the sick folks separated from everybody else. Now, now I think you just don't want anybody to know what's going on inside. So, over the wall, I could see bodies. Not many live people. Place feels almost deserted from the outside. But there's bodies everywhere. On the streets, hanging off the walls. Signs of struggle, bullet holes, blast shadows, burned out windows and doors. I think when the authorities pulled out, the sick people tried to, uh... I don't know. I'm sure they were desperate. Now it's... <laughs> quiet. I don't mean peaceful. It's anything but that. It's a ghost town. But not empty. Just... haunted. It feels like a place that's dead and fucking angry about it. It was some scary shit. <laughs> New York. What's happened to us? NYC! NYC. I'm Rick Falassi and this is Wouldn't You Know It. And if you're listening to me, you're not just a survivor, you're a masochist. You know, I put my faith in my fellow New Yorkers. Because if there's one thing we know how to do at this point, it's help each other get through a crisis. But apparently, some folks missed the memo. Yeah, I was down in Chelsea today. And what did I see? People breaking into place, sure, people looting, but worse than that, people beating people up, people beating people unconscious, people shooting people, and then taking their stuff, and not even stuff they need. I saw a guy in a ski mask with a hunting rifle follow a mom lugging her kid and a suitcase like he was tracking a goddamn deer. And when he got close enough, he didn't say a word. He just raised his fucking rifle and shot her point blank in the back of the head. Kid is screaming and crying. Ski mask ignores him. Starts going through the case right there in the street. Pulls out a couple of things, some jewelry crap like that. Then turns around and walks off. Leaves the kid bawling his eyes out over his mom's dead body. Yeah, I guess I ought to be glad he didn't shoot the kid too. Look. I know it's been a fucked up last couple of months, but is this what we are now? After 9-11, we pulled together, helped each other out. Now we're hunting down unarmed mothers in the street just on the off chance they might have something we want? New York, what's happening to us? Heard about Houston, New York. Heard about Detroit? Heard about Pittsburgh, PA? Uh, not that we haven't had our hands full here. We are the epicenter after all. But it's probably fair to say we've been so preoccupied with making it through the grindhouse flick we're in, we just assumed the rest of the world would be there waiting for us at the end. Not so fast. New numbers released today on the DCD website look shitty. Boston. Philly. Chicago. Atlanta. 
San Francisco, and LA, infection numbers are through the roof. You got martial law being enforced by state and national guards in every city in America. Interstate trucking disrupted, foods not getting delivered, food riots daily across the country. Hospitals are overloaded. No emergency services because the first responders have left to go help in bigger cities like ours. Power grids up and down, just like that. So what's my point? <laughs> my point is, you're like me. You've been telling yourself the world you know is waiting for you on the other side of this mess. But here's the thing. What if it's not? You're listening to Rick Falassi, and wouldn't you know it, the best, if not only, paranoid pirate radio podcast in the tri-state area. So, you got that going for you, which is nice. <laughs> so, folks have been asking me about the federal government, what the state of things is, etc. Basically wanted me to reassure them somebody's still in charge. But I can't. I mean, are there provisions for continuity of government in a crisis? Sure. Realms of classified documentation? Yes. Top secret mountain fortresses, impregnable to any attack, whether conventional, nuclear, biological? You bet. The question is, is it working? Is it functional? Are there still people running the federal government? And if so, who and where? And are they answerable in any way to the people of the Republic for which they stand? I mean, we all know what they're telling us. We see the video footage. We download the official statements. But, but let, let's be clear. Their top priority is to keep us calm. While they try to figure out what the motherfuck to do about all this. Because in case you ain't been outside since Turkey Day, the one thing we can be pretty goddamn sure of is they really haven't nailed it down so far. Not that I blame them. It's such a fucking mess out there, I'm amazed we haven't all turned into cannibals yet. Yet. <laughs> Welcome to the end of the video. It must have been quite a journey unless you skip to the end. Shame on you if you did that. It seems with all the dinging on our part, Felessi still remains a mystery. We don't know who he is or where he is. It is peculiar that he's about the only freelancer on the air in the middle of a pandemic. Perhaps we'll find out more in the Division 2. One thing is for sure many questions remain. And let me know. Who do you think that Rick Fallacy is? Conspire in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. For now, thanks for watching and peace out.